Johnny must be thrilled with the performance. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, we've uh, pretty confident we've come through um, you know, a tough period going back probably six weeks ago for two or three weeks and our planning in terms of um, the squad availability and the players' freshness, I think we've, we're, we're really comfortable with where, where that's at in terms of being able to perform at our best. Amazing midfield numbers, both in hit-outs and clearances, which is obviously a, a turnaround with the clearances. Yeah, massive against, uh, you know, arguably the most talented um, midfield that you could come up against with uh, midfielders. You know, we obviously had a ruck advantage, but, um, yeah, our mids were... I'm really on at the top of their game. Did you attribute the dominance more to the Ruckman or to your ground level? Well, our Ruckman have been pretty dominant in other games and we haven't been as dominant in terms of clearances and all that. So, no, it was credit to the boys for working at all the areas they've been going to. Did you see tonight as a significant turning point? No, not a turning point. Um, you know, Geelong was a, was a good start for us. Um, we followed that up with uh, last week and, and tonight really pleased with how it came back together but uh, yeah as I've always said we've got one round to go for the home and away season that will tell um, you know what our um, finals looks like. What did you say to them at quarter time John? What areas did you address to achieve such a dramatic turnaround? Um, the main areas quarter time were that Collingwood's intensity at the start was you know really at the top of their game uh, but they didn't really dominate the inside 50s. They did score fairly easy when they got it in there, but they, they didn't have the game broken open. If it was 14 or 15 inside 50s to 8 or 9, would have been concerned more. Um, so our attitude at quarter time was we can match that. You know, they, they didn't break us there. Uh, I knew we had more left in terms of what we could take our game to, and we wanted to see how they went as we upped our intensity. How's um, Matty Rose there? Not too good, no. So he's got a sore collarbone. So it's uh, likely that there's a fracture there, but we'll have to have that scanned. If, if there is a fracture, how long? I'm not sure, but usually four weeks, probably at, a, at the quickest. You obviously went through the heartbreak last year where he missed the finals with his knee injury. How's, how's his mentality? No, he's how's devastated, you know. It's just bad timing for him. He's, um, you know, just... Disappointed to, to be missing out over the next few weeks, but um, you know, he'll support the team through it. He's we've got other players that are out injured and can't be part of it right now, with Nikoski and, and obviously uh, Lacra. So, um, you know, the good thing is he's got a lot of teammates that are prepared and ready to, in good form, to come in and help the team keep progressing. And the incident itself, he was running back with the flight of the ball. What does that say about his character? Yeah, with, with um, you know, coming off a jaw that was fractured only three weeks ago or something like that. So um, yeah, it was it's credit to him to play his, his role for the team there. And his face and jaw was OK? Yes. What about other injuries, Cox? Did you get a pitch of the face? You know, yeah, poke like in the eye. Uh, he was fine. He would, if it was any damage, he wouldn't have probably gone back on. And Shui and Gaff were a bit sore, are they? Uh, yeah, they were sore, but they, they were fine. They both finished the game strongly, so. Were there aspects of Josh Kennedy's game that John encouraged him? Absolutely, yeah. Just the fact that he's out there. Yep. Um, and you talk about the, the freshness of the team this time of year. How have you gone about getting... Oh, it's just it's an overall plan. You know, we, we map it out for the whole year and we measure the players consistently. They give us a lot of feedback on how they're feeling. So, um, yeah, it's just tweaking our program as it's been mapped out, but not making too many drastic changes. But um, we're, we're pretty happy with where the group's at. What were your thoughts on leaving Lynch out tonight? Um, really around what we thought with the conditions that, uh, depending on how dewy it was going to get, um, you know, night footy, we uh, just conscious that whether that's the best setup for us as a forward line. All of a sudden you've got a lot of tall forwards available, obviously with Cox and Nadanui able to play down there as well. Does Lynch, uh, when you're choosing your best 22, but the game. Does Lynch fit into that? Yeah, he does, yeah. We we, uh, we know that playing those four tools, if we play a Ruckman up in the forward line plus Kennedy, Darling and Lynch, it, it worked pretty well last year. And we started the season with it in the first few rounds as well this year. So uh, it can work, there's no doubt about that. And uh, we'll just weigh up what, what the availability is of players and what we think going into each game, what's going to be the best setup. So we could certainly go back to that structure. 
Well, is that your most decisive effort at stoppages, you think, for the year, John, given the quality of the opposition and the, the habit you're able to wreak on them by getting such clear ball out of them? Yeah, I, I'm not really sure. I don't know what the stats are from all our other games in regards to stoppages, but... Uh, for where we've been over the last month, it was a big step forward for us for, for what the guys have been working on. How much does Kennedy add structurally, do you think? I mean, even if he's only able to play solidly, the fact that your spearhead, your nominal spearhead is back in the team. Yeah. Um, no, he adds a lot. He's, he's a, a very talented key forward. Um, you know, we rate him extremely highly. So it was a tough call to play him and, and not Lynch tonight. Um, but they're a little bit different, well, they're very different players in that regard. So um, in terms of having to choose one or the other, we thought that Kennedy was the one that, that fit what we were looking for. Um, so now the call is there will be times, I've got no doubt, where we'll look at playing the four tools again because it can really test the opposition. Has Kennedy added even more stutters to his run? <laughs> uh, I don't think so, no. But, yeah, I mean, it's not really the stutters, it's more, the, you know, he takes his few starter steps, but he ends up with three steady strides. So it's it's more about the three strides. Just well, takes him a while to hit the mark to, to start those three strides. John, your thoughts on Hawthorne next week with top four on the line? Can you win it? Yeah, yeah, got nothing to do with top four on the line. You know, just look forward to the game. Do you make anything of the fact that there is top four on the line? No, no. Top four has been on the line since round one. I think uh, just yeah, obviously winning the, the clearance numbers, but just the improvement uh, going on the last three or four weeks has probably been a little bit disappointing. So just to show that we are capable of playing that good footy and the challenges are going to keep coming. So obviously Hawthorne this week and then finals footy. So it's a big aspect of our game and it's, it's good that we were able to win them tonight. What, what did you guys set yourself to do at quarter time? Matt, given the edge they held on you in the first quarter and the clear edge you held on them after that? Yeah, we still felt really confident. I felt that uh, we were, you know, right in the game, and um, like I say, the inside fifties were pretty close. And um, yeah, we got a good couple of uh, stoppage goals, and then the momentum really shifted, and the boys fought hard for the rest of the game. Have you ever played a game where your ruckman have been so dumb? It was sixty hitouts to twelve. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure on the numbers, but we're pretty lucky. Obviously, Dean and Nick are, are fantastic at what they do, and they bring their strengths to our team, and um, that's what we love them for. Obviously, they've won a lot of hit this year, but the clearances haven't often gone your way. What was it like tonight to get both aspects on the right track? Yeah, it's really important. Um, obviously, stro uh, stoppages are a big part of, of footy now, and um, encouraging signs tonight, and we need to carry it on for the remainder of the year. John Freeman, we're very good to finish eighth now with Carlton losing tonight. What about the issue of if you finish fifth and lose your home ground advantage, essentially, if you were to play Fremantle? How? No issue. Would you, would you concede that you lose an advantage though if you were to play them rather than anyone else? No. no. No issue. You just look forward to playing finals footy. We'll find out next week where we finish and plan for our opposition.